What's going on everyone? I hope you're having an amazing day. It's probably going better than mine, I hope, because I just filmed this entire episode without realizing that the audio cord was not plugged in. So we're gonna redo this video for y'all and um, hopefully the audio is being picked up. It looks like it is. But again, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, this video, we're gonna be going over some weird lures that will help you catch more bass during this time of the year and even all year. Uh, you know, these techniques are made for the fall time. We're going into fall transition where the water's turning over, the bass are pushing into the backs of the creeks, and we wanna make sure you can capitalize on this bite. Now, a lot of people, I guarantee you, are not throwing these lures that we're talking about today, so check them all out. You can find them at lakecrowtackle.com. Before we hop into it, guys, make sure you're following the Instagram and Facebook, all new stuff that we get in the store here. I'm gonna be posting about it on the story, posting about it uh, just in regular posts and stuff like that. And of course, we're doing tips and tricks all over the Instagram reels. Face, uh, YouTube uh, shorts and all that stuff. So check it all out. Lake Pro Tackle guys, we're here in North Texas in Gainesville. So let's go ahead and hop into our first item. So kicking it off guys, you know how I like to do things. We're gonna start at the top of the water column. This here is the Mega Bass Sewage. It is going to be a wake bait slash crank down bait. Now what's awesome about this bait here is that uh, it is not available a lot of places. Now, uh, the sewage was made for a couple specific things, like I said. First of all, uh, most people use this as a wake bait. Now you can see the lip here. The reason it's called a sewage is because you can switch where that lip goes, just like that. So right here, when it's pointed, uh, I guess like more vertical or more horizontal, this is going to be the crank down version. With it straight down like that, this is going to be the waking version. Now, we have a couple different colors at the store here. Uh, this is my favorite here. This is going to be the Stealth Wakasaki in a fine art pattern. So the details on it are very, very intricate. You can see single scales and stuff like that. Um, what's super awesome about this one too is it comes with three hooks, not just two. Uh, it's going to be about five and a half inches, 137 millimeters, and it comes in at one ounce, one and one eighth ounce. So for what you're throwing this on, guys, I typically like a little bit longer rod, a seven foot three to seven foot six rod, medium heavy slash uh, like medium heavy heavy, if that makes sense. It's still got to have a good parabolic bend in it, but it needs a little bit of backbone to heave this uh, ounce and an eighth bait. So what's cool about this one here is you can throw it on a braid to leader or you can throw it on a straight fluorocarbon line depending on how you want it to sit. Now obviously if you're throwing a braid to leader, it's gonna sit a little bit higher than traditional, traditional straight fluorocarbon. So when I do wake this bait here, you can throw it on straight, uh, straight braid as well. However, I do like a little bit of shock absorbency in this bait especially since it is very light treble hooks. Now these aren't super, super light. You know, they could be uh, much lighter, but these ones here are gonna be a little bit thin wire. And if you want this bait to sit a bit lower uh, than where it normally sits, add some heavier split rings, add some bigger hooks, and it's going to be able to uh, get exactly where you want it. Now in the waking pattern, guys, you see it's a double dual joint bait. So you can uh, easily work this in and around cover. Uh, pencil reeds are a great area to put this going over laydowns and stuff like that. It is very, very deadly um, around that sort of cover, guys. But again, with three treble hooks, you have a much higher percentage uh, chance of catching those fish, getting them into the boat, especially if they try to headshot this bait, which they do like to do a lot. They like to headshot the bait and um, they're going to eventually get the uh, middle hook and back hook in their mouth once they do that. Now in the crank down version, guys, it's gonna get down around maybe one and a half foot. It's not going that super far down. Uh, it is a heavier bait, but it does like to sit and float at the top. Uh, so as you crank it down, you can go uh, about four or five cranks real fast and then let it float back up. Four or five cranks down, let it go back up. And that is a super, super deadly technique for the fall time where the bait is really going around a lot of it's dying off or start, starting to die off as uh, they get into bigger groups. And as the uh, bass are starting to push the bait, um, this is just an easy way to pick off those fish. Now the five and a half 
length, the 137 millimeter length, is a great size to imitate mature thread fin and also uh, gizzard shad. So it's a great in-between size. That five inches is going to be very deadly uh, for almost all the fish in your lake. So uh, we've got, like I said, we've got a couple different colors. This one here is South Wakasaki. We've got a couple other ones that are a little bolder for some dirtier water but definitely give it a try. The Sewage by Mega Bass is one of my favorite fall time lures, especially if I'm trying to do a whole bunch of different things, trying to run a lot of water. You know, Rip Rap is also a great, er uh, great area for this bait. So that is number one, guys. We're gonna keep it moving here. We're gonna talk about uh, one of my favorite finesse tactic baits, and that is going to be the Jackal Eye Prop. Now, this bait here is going to be um, a lot smaller than that sewage, a lot smaller presence than it as well. You see right there. Uh, this is going to be a spy bait, guys. Now, the eye prop by Jackal is one of my favorite, like I said, finesse style baits. And I'm going to start by telling you about the rod and reel that I'm going to be throwing it on and the line and all that because that is very important for this. Typically, I'm going to be throwing anywhere from a seven foot four to seven foot eight spinning rod in a medium light or medium, medium light um, power in action, guys. So the NRX Plus 902, if you're familiar with how that rod bends and how um, sensitive it is, that is going to be my favorite rod to throw it on. I also love the one from Daiwa, and those are higher end rods, and we're gonna get into some cheaper rods that you can use. Uh, the one by Daiwa is seven foot six, medium, medium light as well. Uh, it's gonna easily be able to throw this little quarter ounce spy bait long distances. And you know, 10 pound test, braided line, Seagar Smackdown is my go-to, and I'm gonna be throwing it on a six to 10 pound leader. Now you wanna make sure your leader isn't so long to, that, to where it coils onto the spool, so typically, the most I'm going to be, uh, the longest leader I'm gonna be throwing on this is around 10 foot. Uh, and that's plenty of uh, length to allow it to straighten out and not coil up on you. Um, so that right there is going to be what I'm going with. I like to throw a 2,500 size reel for these, sometimes a 3,000, not very often. Uh, the 25 is a great size to still catch up to the fish, keep tension on them. And of course the rod has a lot to do with it. Now this is a two hook spy bait as opposed to three hook. Now you can add a third one in the back if you would like. However, I highly recommend you taking heat shrink, putting it around that split ring area um, and on the shank of the hook so it stands straight out instead of getting in the way of this back prop here. If you want some more specific information on spy baiting, I highly recommend you to go check out the hookup tackle video. I'm gonna link that one down in the, down in the description. Uh, ben was over in Japan fishing with the Duo Realis uh, Pro Staff team on Lake Biwa, and it was super awesome to see how they work a spy bait, especially on a bait casting setup. Um, not just spinning setups, but they've got all the information for you on that. So I'm just gonna show you this one here. It is absolutely beautiful the pattern on it. We've got a bunch of different patterns and we have some other spy baits such as the Storm Arashi um, and a couple other ones uh, on the website. So go check them all out. You know, spy baiting, typically I'm gonna be throwing it out open water. However, on docks, it can be super deadly as well. If you get it right under the slip, when you are reeling these in, they do come in in a very um, horizontal line. They're not gonna be rising or falling too much just because the blades the way they're positioned will keep it down in the water column wherever you want it. So if you've got forward facing sonar, this can be very deadly this time of year and into the winter and early spring. All right, next up everyone is going to be one of my favorite baits of the fall time, winter time and spring time. And that is going to be a lot of the year. I just realized I mentioned three out of the four uh, seasons that we have here, but that is going to be my number one bait for uh, finesse style fishing when the bite just gets super, super tough. So this is going to be the Powerbait Berkley Tube. Now this is in a three and a half inch size. What's awesome about this bait here is that it doesn't have a very, very strong, very, you know, robust body. This bait here is almost pure plastisol. It is super flimsy. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of meat on this bait here. And that is one of the key reasons I love it so much. And we've got a whole bunch of different colors on the website, guys. Um, what's awesome about it too is the tail flies around, does a whole bunch of random things. And we're gonna talk about how to rig it up here. 
All right, y'all, so rigging this tube here, I don't use a Texas rig style. I like doing something like a stupid tube rig. Um, so I'm gonna be using these Power Finesse Shrooms by Z-Man here. Uh, now the head color doesn't matter. I just picked these up off the shelf. As long as it's kind of like a sixth of an ounce, that is going to be perfect for you. But all you're gonna do, guys, um, so you're gonna not tie on directly to your jig head yet, but what you're gonna do is take your jig head like this, take your tube, you're gonna slide that, um, that head of the tube straight up into the plastic like that. You're gonna have your hook exposed here. Now there's ways you can do this uh, and rig this up to where your hook is not exposed. However, typically in the fall time, I'm gonna be pitching this around docks, pitching this around uh, just more vertical cover, guys. You're gonna pop the eye off out of that jig, but first you're gonna push it as far forward as you can. And this is the most important part. You're gonna push the tube back um, along that uh, shank as much as you can. And you want that eye to pop out as far forward as you can without getting it at the very front of the tube, guys. This is gonna allow the tube to do what I call a death spiral to where it's going to fall in a circle, kind of like that. Um, now, now the technical bass and guys have been talking about this death spiral for a little bit. I've been talking about it for a long time with my Nico rigs. I've thrown the tube, talked about the death spiral. And when it comes to fish and then, and then pushing bait into a certain area uh, and they're keyed in on bait, you know, kind of falling down, you know, you always hear people talk about, you know, the big ones are sitting near the bottom, being lazy and waiting for their food to come to them. Guys, they're not wrong. I've seen plenty of times big fish sit under schools and I throw something like this tube down at them to where it's just spiraling down. It can be very, very deadly. All right, guys, so for this tube technique, I really like a very limber rod. Now, it, I do have to have some backbone to get the hook into them because this little jig head here is, I mean, basically just your standard Texas rig hook. It's got a decent thickness to it. So the rod of choice, it can vary a little bit in length. However, I'm gonna be going from mainly a seven foot two to seven foot five rod. Now, I don't want it too long because typically I'm pitching this into areas uh, in tight cover places where I need a little bit of um, shorter rod to get them out of certain areas. With a long rod in close quarters, a lot of the times you pull up too much, uh, too much of the line and you, you end up almost having to reel all your slack in and they'll pop off at that point. You know, this isn't um, the strongest hook in the world, but it is uh, gonna be a long shank hook. So you do have a, a good amount of leverage on the fish. All you have to do is keep them tight. So seven foot two to seven foot four rod, it's gonna be perfect, medium heavy, with a decent parabolic bend on it is going to be ideal. So number three, there's a little tube right there, super deadly, especially in the fall time. Get that, what we like to call, death spiral action. Uh, next up, guys, is going to be uh, two brand new products to the store. Um, I am super psyched about these, and I'm sure y'all will too. You can't find these a lot of places. They're sold out in a lot of places. The Gee Crack or G Crack, um, Bellows Shad is my number one. This one here is in Honeydew in the 3.8 inch. This is a perfect size for imitating Threadfin Shad, Little Gizzard Shad, Bluegill, depending on the colors you want. The Honeydew color is one of my favorites on the back of a bladed jig. Now these bladed jigs here, jackhammer chatterbaits, slobber knockers, doesn't really matter too much. You know, your industry standard is going to be the jackhammer. I love putting these Bellow Shads uh, vertically on the back of a chatterbait. You know, it matches up super, super well. It has a good tall profile, something that the fish don't quite see a lot of the time. A lot taller profile chatterbait like that uh, can be super, super deadly and not a lot of people are throwing it. Now you can still throw this on a Texas rig and all the other stuff, but this is one of those weirder lures. You know, you can see all these ribs in the bait provides a lot of um, action for the bait. It pulls a lot of water and it looks like a bigger profile without the bait being a solid piece of plastic. So those bass, as they eat it, crumples up, shrinks down, and it, it's a much easier meal for them to get in their mouths. So the Bellow Shad is number one. Number two is going to be the big old 5.8 inch bellows gill. Come three to a pack, guys. Look how big this thing is. Um, here is the uh, bellows gill in the 5.8 inch, and we can compare it to the sewage. 
It is literally the same size as the sewage. So if you see this bait here and you're like, oh, it's not that bad, guys, it, it, this is the same length, if not a little bit um, shorter. However, the biggest thing is the width of the bait. Now, don't worry, guys. I am using a big ol' owner beast hook in a, what is it, six aught? Yeah, six aught. So what's great about this thing here is that the centering pin on this, uh, on this hook is very, very strong. You're gonna get it straight into the lure every time. The six aught is a little overkill, I must admit. I wish it was a little bit um, thinner you know, of a gap here, but let's not worry about that too much. Um, but this big old 5.8 bellows gill is super, super cool, I think. This here, I, uh, I forget the color. The color names are always different. This is at 300. Um, their names are kind of like Yamamoto where they're like color codes essentially. But this one here on a six aught beast hook, guys, you can flip this around docks, shallow wood, uh, any sort of cover on the bank. Uh, typically, I like to have a small, small weight on it, like a little quarter ounce weight. It's gonna get down there, kind of spiral around and have a good death spiral just because you're weighted on the bottom with the hook and it's going to vertically kind of, or horizontally kind of fall in a death spiral action. So this can be super deadly around docks and shallow cover, like I said. However, you can throw this out there um, on a Texas rig with a little bit bigger weight uh, and kind of just drag it along the bottom. It's gonna look like a bluegill or a big old shad struggling to get away on the bottom. Great around brush. Um, as you can hear, see here, the text pose on the bait is very, very good. You know, I can't even get a hook in me rubbing my finger down it. Um, but you're basically gonna bring the hook all the way out the bait, tuck it back through the ribs here, and it is gonna act as a very, very good weed guard. And don't worry, when you do set the hook with your big old monster rod, you're gonna get a hook in them for sure. So rod of choice, guys, is going to be a seven foot four to seven foot 11, I guess. Like seven foot four to eight foot rod heavy or extra heavy depending on if it's a swim bait rod or something like a just traditional bass rod. So when it comes down to it, guys, you need a beefy rod for this beast hook. You're flipping around heavy line, 20 to 25 pound line is going to be perfect. Uh, you can get away with 17, definitely do that. Um, however, I like to be on the side of caution where I'm throwing 20 pound line guys. So that is my top five weird baits for right now. Fishing can get tough. I was out at Lake Louisville the other day and absolutely smashed them. Um, but you know, depending on where you are in the country, water temps are different, weather's different, everything is a factor. All right guys, so fishing all around the country is a little bit different. However, if you're in the area here in Texas and you wanna learn how to target big bass uh, with big line, big baits, uh, and especially forward-facing sonar, if you have that, I'm gonna be doing a co-seminar with John Shin from Big Bass Blessings. You can check him out on Facebook and his Facebook group. We're all focused on catching the biggest bass of our lives. Doesn't have to be on swim baits and stuff, but it sure does help having those uh, tied on the deck as well, and it's a lot more fun. But check us out, our first seminar, uh, or I guess our seminar coming up is gonna be October 7th. So if you're in the North Texas area or wanna make the drive over here, Guys, John is putting out more information on his Big Bass Blessings page on Facebook, so go check it out. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.